Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and this thing is just ridiculous. It's one of three new LG Ultra Gear gaming monitors that have just been unveiled, but this is their first OLED gaming monitor. And so the idea is, instead of maybe buying one of their OLED TVs, like the C1 or C2, both of which I have used right here as my sort of desktop replacement monitor slash TV, this LG Ultra Gear 48 GQ900 is made for gamers. So a big thank you to LG for sending these review samples out to me and also offering to sponsor this video, but as always, all opinions are my own and they don't have any input on my tests or scripts. So when this was first announced a few months back, I had a few big questions. What about burn-in? What's the port situation gonna be like? And also how expensive? And is it gonna be any good? Well, I've only had a week with this so far, but I reckon I can answer most of those. And to answer what I think is probably the biggest question, how does this compare to an OLED TV? Well, I think there's six big differences. Well, firstly, have you ever seen a matte OLED screen of this size? The anti-glare low reflection panel works incredibly well on this and compared to a regular glossy OLED TV, it makes a nice change not staring back at yourself whenever you have a dark scene. Another big difference is this is overclockable to 138 Hz, which really is as simple as just turning it on in the OSD. So assuming your PC is powerful enough to take advantage of it, this is gonna be a bit faster. Also, around the back, we have three HDMI 2.1s and a DisplayPort 1.4, which is not something you'll see on a normal TV and really is the best way to get that full fat 4K 138Hz HDR experience with your PC. Now, you know me, someone could give me a gold bar and I'd say, well, that's good, but you know, it could be lighter or you know, it could be worth more. There's always some room for improvement. And I think with this, I wouldn't have said no to a Thunderbolt port as well for outputting from more laptops and also my Mac, because right now, USB-C Thunderbolt is the only way of getting high refresh on a Mac. But it's such a nice screen that I'd be happy to do a lot more than just gaming on this. So if I could have my high refresh Mac set up as well for my video and photo editing, that would have been nice. So perhaps next time a Thunderbolt port, but really that is just nitpicking. Another difference versus a TV is that we have this RGB lighting on either side, which to be fair, isn't really powerful enough to change the color of your wall behind it, unless you have it wall mounted, in which case these side lights will have more of an effect. And actually I probably would recommend Visa mounting it because even though I have a pretty big 100 centimeter deep desk here, 48 inches is still a lot. So I would either wall mount or consider carefully where you're gonna put this in your room. Then there is this, which I've not seen before. It looks like something you would have with a stream deck or a video editor would have for their color correcting. It's a big chunky controller with various shortcut buttons and also this dial that you can use to control the on-screen display for all the game modes, inputs, and even the OLED care settings. I don't know why it needs to be this big though, but all right. And finally, one other difference is that with this, we get DTS HPX sound and also this headphone jack up front instead of more traditional eARC and Dolby Atmos support that you get with a TV. And of course, this doesn't have a TV tuner or the WebOS smart interface. And there's also no Dolby Vision HDR. So you can, of course, watch stuff online or probably a better idea is using a games console because they have various streaming apps as well. Or what you can do, if I pick up this gargantuan remote and switch to, I believe, HDMI 3. I've got a Fire TV stick plugged in. I would recommend getting the Fire Stick 4K or 4K Max because you've got the resolution and HDR here, but using the built-in controller, you could uh, make this a bit more of a TV that way. But really, you're buying this to game on, and in that respect, it is awesome. I mean, 4K, 138 hertz, as low as a 0.1 millisecond response time, I measured 450 nits of brightness in SDR and 1150 nits in HDR, which is beyond what most OLED TVs can pump out. And of course, being OLED rather than IPS or VA or even with a mini LED backlight, these self-flip pixels means we really don't have to worry about haloing and blooming or light bleed, anything like we do with traditional monitors. But I know what you're thinking. The flip side of that, of course, is with an OLED panel, there is that risk of burn-in. But the good news is LG has brought over some of their uh, safety features from the TVs over to this. Because arguably you are more at risk of burn-in with a PC monitor where you're more likely to have static taskbars or HUD elements, but we have pixel refresh and every 10 minutes or so you can see the pixels shift. And also with the power saving modes, it'll turn off after a few hours anyway. So unless you really abuse it, I don't think you're gonna have to worry about burn-in. 
Also, have a look at this. I've increased the brightness to 100, so this may be a little bit blown out on my camera, but one issue I've had with using OLED TVs as a desktop slash gaming monitor is the very aggressive auto dimming, which actually on some of the TVs, LG's TVs, you can turn off. If you buy a service remote control, you can sort of disable it, but it's not really recommended and it's a bit of a faff. There is still auto dimming to prevent burning and uh, you know give you a longer life of your screen, but it's not overly aggressive. It's not something I've really noticed. That's the crucial bit. What I will say though is while I'm a big fan of that anti-reflective coating, it essentially makes the screen matte. So you do lose out a little bit on those inky colors and the higher perceived contrast that you get from a glossy TV screen. I'll tell you what also surprised me, the speakers on this are insane. It's also just a really good looking monitor. We've got super thin bezels around all the edges. There's no chunky chin like you often find. And also the stand is nice and low profile and cables can run underneath, which is handy. I'll tell you what I would like though, a 42 inch version of this. 48 is a bit overwhelming. Uh, it's something I discovered when I tried the 48 inch LG C1 OLED TV last year, whenever it was, uh, it was just a bit too big. So I was obviously really looking forward to the 42 inch C2 OLED, which I have. I might be doing a comparison video with this later down the road, so make sure you have subscribed. But I would love a 42 inch version of this. I think it would give it much wider appeal. Although, if you do want a smaller gaming monitor and you quite fancy these new LG Ultra Gears, then you do have a couple of other options, like this guy. Sadly, they're not OLED, they use nano IPS displays, but importantly, they're a bit more of a sensible size and also they're more affordable. So this guy is the LG Ultra Gear 32GQ950, which is a 32 inch 4K 144Hz display, which can be overclocked to 160. And then there's also the 32GQ850, which I don't have with me here, but it trades the 4K resolution for Quad HD and instead gives us an overclocked 260Hz refresh rate. Both 32 inches also get an ATW or Advanced True Wide Polarizer to help boost viewing angles. And they also both have HDMI 2.1 ports, but no built-in speakers and they're not OLED. So while they may be the more sensible choice, it's this 48GQ900 that's really spoiled me. So I think whether you're a PC or a console gamer, we can all agree this is a bit tasty, but the big question is how much? The cheapest Q850 model, that's the Quad HD 32 inch, will save back $900, or so $899. The Q950, which is the 4K version, will be, and this, the 48 inch Q900, will cost you $1499. A lot of money, it is a lot of money, but considering it's a 4K, 138Hz, HDR, proper gaming monitor, I don't think that's too crazy. I reckon I am gonna stick with this for a little while. As I say, I'm hoping to do maybe a longer term review of it and also compare it to uh, other displays and also TVs. So make sure you've hit that subscribe button. And also right now, LG Ultra Gear are running a 24 hour campaign with loads of different creators talking about these monitors. So watch some of those and also check out LG's Twitch and Twitter pages to find out more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.